Now that we have an understanding of DNA and how DNA is this cookbook that holds all these recipes that tell us how to make proteins and how RNA works, we can look at this thing called biotechnology. Biotechnology is sometimes called genetic engineering. With the knowledge that we have in society with DNA and how DNA works, we actually have the ability, for good or for bad, to manipulate DNA and make DNA do what we want it to do. So when we look at biotechnology, this is where we use living organisms to create a product. Some of you might have heard of modified foods or GMOs. This is going to fall into this category. Now, for years, we've been doing what's called selective breeding. And selective breeding is just what the name says. We select who's allowed to breed. And we see this a lot in, for example, you've heard of pedigrees. You know, usually in nature, dogs, cows, pigs, plants, all of these just breed however they want to. But if you are a dairy farmer, you might choose which female cows you mate with which, with which bulls. Because this bull might have a certain muscle strength or this cow might be a good milk producer. So you're going to choose to breed these two together. This is how we create different, what we call hybrids. So for years, farmers, this is how people, you know, some people are really into growing different types of plants. So they might take a flower from one plant and then sprinkle the pollen onto a different plant. They selected, they just did not let nature do its thing. So for years, we've done selective breeding and this has caused some good things and this has caused some bad things. But a lot of times with selective breeding, you have a very narrow scope. So for example, Dalmatians. Dalmatians are a mutation, but a lot of people think they're really cool looking dogs. So we have selectively bred these dogs. Well, the problem is most Dalmatians are close to related. And so we keep breeding the same genes over and over and over again. And that's why a lot of Dalmatians are actually born deaf because that gene is now trapped within that one species or that one type of dog. Because over time, we select which dogs breed with which dogs. Well, when we do selective breeding, you know, if you're a farmer or you are, you know, some people like they're making new types of roses or they're making two types of lilies or whatever it is that you're doing. We have something called a test cross. Now we've done genetics and you know, with Punnett squares, we usually take the mom and we take the dad, or we take plant one, and we take plant two, and we breed them to see what their kids are going to be like. A test cross kind of works backwards. A test cross might be you have a plant that has this really, really, really pretty purple color, but you don't know, is this purple color big A, big A, or is this purple color big A, little A? So you're going to test it. So what you'll do in a test cross is you always test whatever dominant you're trying to figure out with the recessive, in order to see what the kids are going to be like. So you're always going to cross it with recessive. So if we have this really pretty purple flower and I cross it with a white flower, and every time I do it, all the kids always end up being purple, then we know that that <clears throat> unknown is probably big, big. But if I take it and I cross it with the white flower and I get this combination, then I know that that unknown is probably big, little which leads us to this concept that we call genetic engineering. And genetic engineering, as you can see here, is the process of making changes in the DNA code of living organisms by moving genes from one organism to another. Basically with gen genetic engineering, we're making what we call transgenic organisms. These are organisms that have a totally different type of DNA in them. For example, this mice, these mice that you see right here. Notice in black light, they glow neon. Well, there are certain jellyfish that bioluminesce. They mix two chemicals together and they glow. This is how glow sticks work. This is why you have to break them. Well, there is a tube inside the tube and one tube has one chemical, the other tube has another chemical. And when you break it, you're breaking the tube on the inside so that these chemicals can mix together and it causes it to bioluminesce. Well, for some reason, scientists, probably just to see if they could do it, made a transgenic mouse. They took jellyfish DNA and they put it into an embryo of a mouse. Now this mouse creates those two chemicals and so when they mix together, it kind of causes them to glow. Now we're not talking about like a glowing mouse running around, but in the correct light, you can see how their skin glows. 
This is what we call a GMO, a genetically modified organism. It's also called a transgenic organism. Now, transgenic, again, transgenic organisms have two different kinds of DNA in them. Like this mouse has jellyfish DNA in it. As far as nature's concerned, this, there's no reason for this mouse to have this. These scientists just did it basically to see if they could do it and see what would happen. But genetic engineering can be accomplished through what's called transformation. And basically DNA is so important that if a cell realizes, hey, why is there DNA floating around on the outside? It will absorb that DNA and incorporate that DNA. Nature wants to conserve DNA. So transformation is when a cell takes in DNA from the outside. So basically I could take a skin cell and put it in a Petri dish and then put a bunch of DNA around it. And in transformation, sometimes that skin cell will actually absorb the DNA. Now it's a little bit more um, complicated than that. I'm just kind of using this so you can get an idea of what transformation is. But a lot of times we use bacteria because as the bacteria will absorb that DNA and then the bacteria will infect the skin cell. And when bacteria infect, they can mix DNA together. Now, genetically engineered products, again, some scientists have just done this to see what would happen, but there are some really cool things that could and have come out of transgenic or genetically engineered things. One of them is human insulin. Now, you've all heard of insulin before and you've heard of diabetes, but a lot of people don't really know what it is. Diabetes type one, which is also called juvenile diabetes. In this case, this is an autoimmune disorder in which these persons do not make insulin. And insulin is needed to basically turn our liver off. One of the jobs of your liver is to feed your blood. So it's like turning on a faucet. Well, you don't need your faucets running all the time. So insulin actually helps turn the faucet off. Insulin tells Mr. Liver, hey, you fed the blood enough, let's turn off for a little while. Well, people with type 1 diabetes cannot make insulin. So it's like leaving a faucet running all the time. So their body constantly is putting sugar into the blood, whether it's needed or not. That can cause the blood to become thick, that can cause the blood cells to dehydrate, and it can cause them to lose valuable sugar in their urine. So insulin regulates the amount of blood sugar. Well, for years, it was very hard to make insulin. We would actually have to take pigs, pig livers, or excuse me, pig pancreas, and extract insulin from animals such as pigs. So it would take a long time and a lot of money to make one very, very, very small jar of insulin. Well, we know through the Human Genome Project, which is where we have actually mapped out our DNA, we know exactly what the recipe is to make insulin. We know the gene for human insulin and we know where to find it. So it would be like going to the cookbook and tearing out the recipe for human insulin and putting it in a notebook for bacterial proteins. Basically what we're able to do is we're able to take something like a skin cell and cut out the insulin gene and then we put that gene into a bacteria. So that bacteria is now transgenic. It now has a human gene in it. Well, that bacteria will begin to make insulin. And bacteria reproduce once every 20 minutes. So I only need to make one transgenic bacteria. And in days, I have thousands of these bacteria that are now creating insulin. Now, insulin is not something the bacteria needs. So it will release that insulin as a waste product. And we can harvest that insulin, clean it up, and make it available for people with type 1 diabetes. We can also create what's called golden rice. Okay, there's this huge article in Time Magazine about this. Okay. A lot of undernourished people in poorer countries do not have vitamin A, and therefore this can cause blindness. Now you've heard all of your life, carrots are good for your eyes. This is why. Carrots contain vitamin A, and vitamin A is one of the nutrients that we need in order for our eyes to work the way that they're supposed to. Well, a lot of people in poorer countries don't have access to the foods that have vitamin A in them. Okay. They don't grow carrots. They don't grow things like oranges. Okay? Oranges are orange because they have beta carotene in them. So in a lot of these poor countries, rice is a staple and rice is actually very inexpensive. So we can genetically modify rice. We can make transgenic rice. 
We can take white rice, which is very easily grown and is not that expensive to purchase, and insert a carrot gene in it. So this is rice that now has a gene of a carrot. So this rice creates beta carotene, which makes vitamin A. So this rice is gonna have kind of an orangey color to it. But now these people who are eating the rice are getting these nutrients that they need that will help promote better eyesight. So genes for making beta carotene were actually done from daffodils and put into the rice. So the rice would be transgenic. It has a daffodil gene in it. We can also do what's called recombinant bovine growth hormone. This is a hormone that's found in cows and it actually creates how much milk they make. So what people have done is they've taken this gene out of the cow and they put it into bacteria. And then the bacteria begins to create this hormone in large amounts. And then the farmers can then give that hormone to their cows in order to cause their cows to create more milk. One of the coolest things ever, in my opinion, is spider silk. You've all seen a spider web. You don't realize how strong spiders' webs are until you see spider silk. I'm gonna show you guys, um, there's lots of videos on YouTube that you can look that talk about spider silk. But when you put spider silk, now we're talking about millions of pieces of spider silk. When you put spider silk and you weave it together, it is five times stronger than steel. It is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly strong. And so what they've done is they are doing a lot of investigations with spider silk. What can we make with spider silk? And I'm gonna show you guys this in a second. But it takes a long time and millions of spiders to make enough spider silk to make a shirt. So we have genetically modified goats. Yes, there are such things as spider goats. Spider goats have this spider silk gene in them. And silk is a protein. Just like your hair is made from protein, the silk of spiders are made from proteins. Well, these spider goats create this silk protein in their milk. So when you milk the spider goats, no, it doesn't look like spider silk. It doesn't look like a spider web come out. But the protein needed to make the spider milk, spider silk, is in the milk. And so then they can harvest those proteins and turn it into the silk that they need to do what these experiments are. So a lot of cool ideas is with spider silk, it's so strong. Imagine making clothes that would never get holes in them. That would be awesome. Imagine making ropes that would never break. Imagine making artificial tendons. A lot of times when people have to have um, tendons replaced, we have to use like animals, like pig tendons. But what if we could make a tendon for you and you would never have to worry about your body rejecting that tendon? You would never have to worry about that tendon tearing. What if we can make bandages for burn victims? Burn victims go through horrific treatments in order to debride their skin of the dead burnt skin cells. It's incredibly painful for these victims and it leads to incredibly bad scarring. What if we could take bandages made of spider silk and lay it over their wounds and just leave them? We don't have to change the bandages. And we let their new skin grow over the spider silk. We're not gonna go in and remove it. They're, it's not gonna cause any problems. It's not gonna cause infections. It's not gonna cause um, rejection. But it's a bandage I don't have to change and it will allow the skin to grow over it so they don't have this really bad scarring. Some really cool things being done with spider silk. Again, we talked about these things called glowing organisms. Okay. The genes that make the jellyfish glow are inserted and they glow under UV light. Now, obviously we're not gonna allow these to go into nature. They're not, not gonna glow in the dark, but they're still genetically modified. They are not natural, so we're not gonna release them from a lab. But as far as I know, I don't see a reason to do this. I guess scientists just wanted to see if they could do it. So when you're talking about GMOs, genetically modified organisms or transgenic organisms, there is a moral issue to this. And we're not gonna discuss morality, but it does, you know, are we, should we really be doing what we're doing? So does the good outweigh the morality? Just something to think about. We could also make these things called BT crops. 
Bt is a bacteria that's toxic to some insects. So what if instead of using insecticide, which is a poison, and spraying that insecticide on our plants, what if we can take the gene from bacteria and put them into the plant? So therefore, then the plant will make an insecticide. We don't have to make these poisonous, toxic insecticides. The plant makes its own. And therefore, we don't have to worry about the insects eating the plant. So we've been talking about these things called transgenic organisms. And these are any organism whose genome incorporates and expresses genes from another organism. Your genome is your genetic library. It's all of your DNA put together. It's all of your chromosomes. Trans means across. So transgenic is two different organisms swapping genes, basically. So like the cat and the jellyfish, or the rice and the daffodil. So there's lots of different ways that we can use this in industry. Okay. Bacteria are used to break down oil. Now you can see in this picture when there's oil spills, we literally have to go out and try to sweep up as much of the oil as possible. Okay. We're not going to get it all. Oil is incredibly toxic to the environment. Animals get covered with oil. You know, I can only dump so much soap. I can't dump soap on an ocean. And anyway, soap is not natural. It's a pollutant as well. Well, some gentlemen in their garage created a billion dollar industry. They created a brand new type of bacteria. And this bacteria breaks down oil. So they have created this freeze dried, basically powdered bacteria. So in the case of oil spills, all you have to do is with a plane, fly over the oil spill and drop this powdered bacteria. When the bacteria, when the bacteria hits the water, it basically wakes up from hibernation and it starts to feed on the oil. Once the oil is gone, the bacteria has no food source, the bacteria dies. So there's no pollutant left behind. We can also use um, genetic modifying to do things such as cheese, yogurt, make paper. We can also use transgenic organisms to extract minerals from ores. Gold mining. Gold mining is an incredibly toxic industry. You've all heard of cyanide. It's a poison. Well, cyanide is used in the mining of gold. Well, back in the day, miners would use cyanide and then just clean their equipment into the running water. Well, this is why a lot of ghost towns literally became ghost towns. The cyanide in the water killed all the fish. It killed things in that area. Well, now we still use cyanide in the extracting of gold, but there is a genetically modified bacteria that will eat cyanide. So as they're rinsing the gold in this cyanide mixture, instead of just dumping the water down the drain that has the cyanide in it, it goes into a vat. And in that vat, it actually, like a water wheel, will go through these colonies of bacteria. And the bacteria will take the, the cyanide out of the water and purify the water. We also use bacteria to make things like chemicals and dyes. Remember the dyes that create our clothes, our colors, are chemicals from plants. This is how our ancestors made dyes. They crushed up plants. Well, we know what the protein, we know the recipe to make like red pigments, the blue pigments. So we can actually use bacteria, transgenic organisms. We could put the plant gene into the bacteria and the bacteria makes the dye for us. It makes the chemical for us, for our clothes. Like I said, we can also use transgenic organisms in medicine. We use bacteria to make insulin. We can also use bacteria to make vaccines. We can take human genes, such as the cystic fibrosis gene, and put it into animals. Now, again, this comes to the morality of lab testing. You know, does the pros outweigh the cons? But we do have transgenic organisms in laboratories that we're using to study human diseases with. And with agriculture, what if we can make plants resistant to insects? We don't need these toxic pesticides anymore. We can put genes from one kind of plant into another plant, and maybe that plant smells a little funny, and those insects don't like the way it smells. What if we could make plants that it doesn't matter how cold it gets, it's not gonna bother them anymore. It would save the citrus industry thousands of dollars every year. What if I could make plants with more vitamins? And last but not least, what if I can make it so that peanuts couldn't make you allergic anymore? What if I can make foods non-allergenic? 
So there's lots of what if in biotechnology or genetic engineering. So it's a really fascinating and rapidly evolving industry.